Well, hello, everyone. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to Fridays with Sandy. That would be yes, Sandy. Yes, hi there. Friday. This is Friday the 13th. With yes. Sandy. Indeed. And Sandy Gary. is in Boston, as he always is. We have Bill, who is in Alberta, Canada. Welcome, Bill. And I yeah, am in California. You. So Bill is our candidate today. He's got a 710 G mat, which he took five years ago. He thinks he can do a 730, 750, no problem. Uh, 3.5 uh, GPA from uh, it's a university in Canada. Uh, yeah. It's Alberta <laughs> University, right? Yeah, that's right. And finance, uh, interesting career track. Uh, he's done 20 months of internships, including one with GE Capital. Uh, ended up at TD Bank uh, as an assistant uh, manager and then made an incredible transition into uh, the Alberta Investment Management Corp. And I say incredible because he switched his focus to be a business systems analyst, uh, self-taught software developer. He developed software uh, on Calypso, which is a major program for investment managers. So his first choice school, Harvard, and he is also looking at Columbia Business School. He's 30 years old, uh, has four years at the Alberta Investment Management Corp. Born and raised in China, came to Canada at the age of 18 for his education and his work experience. So Sandy, what do you think? Hi, Bill, good to see you. Uh, do people, you work at the Alberta Investment Management Corporation. Do people there usually apply to business school? Uh, many of them do. Uh, so my mentor, he graduated from Booth. Uh huh. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, good. Okay. So as to Harvard Business School, we got 30 years old. We've got a 710 GMAT, which is expiring. So let's let's say you get the 730. Okay. Let's just deal with that. We'll deal with the 710 as well. Uh, let's say you get the 730, we got a 3.5 and a very powerful personal story about coming to Canada when you're alone and making your own way. And then some terrific internships at the Canada Revenue Agency, the Alberta Health Service and GE Capital. And then a full-time job at the Alberta Investment Management Corporation which you tell me now is a feeder to uh, business schools. Uh, John, if he gets a 7.30 and he's got a 3.5, he should, with a, if, if he can convince Columbia he really wants to go there, it's a powerful story, no? Yeah, he's got to lean into that story because I think it's very strong having come from uh, China uh, with, you know, low English skills and ad adopting a new country and a new lifestyle, new culture, um, doing exceptionally well in it. Uh, yeah, I think could maybe tell our, to tell our, what, what, just what's up generally. Aren't there, aren't there a lot of applications because of the virus? Hmm? Oh, right now, yeah. Have, haven't applications been on the- uh, Upswing. Like, upswing, yeah. yeah. Highly competitive right now. Yeah, so this is as highly competitive as it's been in Quite your surprising. memory in terms of number of applications. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that Harvard will have a record uh, year this year uh, because they didn't fully participate in the big upswing last year since their last deadline was before uh, the pandemic hit. All right, so the moral of the story is, uh, Bill, you've you're facing a very competitive year at HBS and also Columbia. It gets me excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, we can tell, you know, we have, we have a little pre-session before we actually go on air. And I can tell you what, I, how, what impresses me about Bill. He's a very ambitious guy, very competitive, and willing to do the hard work that it takes to get ahead. Yes. Here's a tough one for you, John. If you got to... If you gotta, he, he's, he's got to retake the GMAT because the score is expiring. Right? Absolutely. Okay, so he gets a 730. Which is the median at Harvard. I think he needs more than a 730 to be really competitive at Harvard. Yeah, I can try for that. It's not going to be a problem. 
<laughs> if he gets a 730, uh, where does that put him at Columbia? That's the more interesting question. Yeah, I think I think he's he's good at Columbia with a 730. I, I, I really think his strongest story is, is his story. You know what I mean? What he has to leverage is uh, those transitions in his life that he's been able to make, including the transition from being a financial analyst, essentially, to being a software guy and having self-taught himself to do it. Is kind yeah, of that's amazing. an amazing story. Okay, uh, and uh, what, what are your goals, Bill? My goal is actually with the MBA uh, transition to ultimately private equity. That's another powerful story right there because both of our, both me and my wife, our families have deep roots in local business community. Uh, and with my experiences in Canada, I've realized that Western capital, uh, the, the growth in Western countries have slowed down really and investors are looking for attractive returns. And, but when they want to take advantage of uh, high growth in China, in, in all of those markets, they become very weary and cautious and sometimes nervous uh, because Chinese local partners are not so by the books. You know, they're not very trained yeah. um, in, in operating the business the same way as Western uh, do. And also... Uh, there's cultural difference. There's time zone. There's a lot of complexity. So they okay, really well, want. Okay, got it. Here, what yeah. you have to say is, I want to be a bridge for Western capital investors in China. It's not a trans. Yeah. Investing in China is not fully transparent. You need a local. Most often, you need a local bridge, and I'd like to provide that. Both, yeah. you know, and with good network and deep roots. Yeah. What? what um, what job would you want after business school? After business school, well, uh, during the business school, I, I want to have investment banking intern, uh, which which would help me transition into ultimately private equity. And I right. I want to I want to do a couple of transactions, um, get the experience under my belt, so that I you know when I go back to China, uh, acting as a bridge, people can give me that trust and credibility. Boy, you, you, do you plan to start your own firm after business school? Why not? Why not? It's possible. But you, I've actually you, had friends. You, you, you tell me if it's possible. Like, it's not. Let me say this. In the United States, it would be very, very difficult unless you had friends and family money, if you know what that is. Yeah. And in China, that's what I have. Uh, friends and family money. OK, you've convinced me. Uh, <laughs> I, I think a couple of years at Goldman Sachs or Blackstone or J.P. Morgan, uh, might really be very helpful to you, though. Yeah. Okay, John, you're, you're soft peddling that. What John just said is he thinks you might be better off working for a blue chip American investment bank or PE bank. Uh, is that something you'd consider? You yeah. can be honest here. Yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, and, and all of those experiences are highly respected in China. So and yes, as well as respected right. by Western And you could partners. increase your network. Uh, so that's a possibility. Of course, there's nothing like just getting in and doing it. But yeah. Plus, it would give you more credibility to raise money in the United States. Of course. And, and by <laughs> next year, I'll be, I'll be a CFA uh, charter holder as well. Boy, got a lot going for you, man. Yeah. Uh, with the CFA software skills, do-it-yourself story, come to Canada story. Uh, get that 7.30. Hey, John, if he gets a 7.30, should he take it again? This is no. the, 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 the tough question, the cynical question. No, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why, because I think he, he has a compelling narrative um, that takes him out of the pile. But he's got to tell that story really well. He's got to make it work like Yeah, great. yeah. He's he's got really a compelling story. You, you just... Look, I don't always say this, hire, hire a consultant, okay? Actually, that's uh, frankly not a bad idea. I, I also agree with Sandy. We don't often tell people that, but I think, you know, <clears throat> English is not your first language. And yeah. I think because your story really has to work for you. Uh, it's, you know, 3.5 is below the class average at Harvard and Columbia. Right. Uh, or Wharton or Chicago Booth, if you want to go there. And uh, a 7.30 is, you're, you're, you know, you're in the median. You're not way above it. No, uh, no, yeah, John, I, I'd hire a consultant just 
So you go through, the, it, it's not a matter of English language skills. It's a matter of um, substance in any language. What I want you to be able to do is explain your story to another person who can then help you formulate it in a way that other people can understand it. It's not a matter of English language skills. It's yes, just yes. a matter of presentation skills. And that's something a consultant might help you with. Now, he, now Sandy, if you were to imagine what his essay would be like for, for Harvard, where we know the, the prompt is, tell us something we don't already know from your application, essentially. How would you, how would you structure that for Bill? I'd say, I, I, I want you to know about uh, my, my plans to become a, an impactful investor in China. And those plans are based on, you know, uh, my friends and family, my network of friends, uh, my parents' uh, history. That's that's the way to get all that stuff in there. Now, let me ask you this, Bill: yep. What do you want Harvard Business School to know about you that's not on your resume? Exactly my backstory. Um, exactly. I agree my fully with your assessment that uh, you know the academic the scores are not playing in my, in my, in my advantage, even though, you know, I'm, I'm convinced that I will do very, very well when I get to Harvard, you know, I'm a competitive guy. I've been always entire, my, my entire life, my underdog, but I've yeah. always proven people that, you know, I, I can be just as good. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, so yeah, you know telling what? your personal story is what I would do for Harvard. Sandy, I That's like the story about his father who passed away last year, sadly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he, he and his father had a sort of a bet, right? That's right. The father right. at the age of 30 was managing 4,000 people in China? 4,000, 5,000, I, I, I couldn't remember. That was in the 1990s when I was a kid, right? And his ambition for you would be to what? He actually had no ambition for me. He had, he's like, you know, you can do whatever you want. Ooh. That's the honest answer. Because uh, I'm me, both me and my wife. Yeah, hey, hey, John, you're, 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 turning family this to, you're turning this into a <laughs> daytime soap opera story. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but I wanted, but I wanted. It's more important. It's not what he wanted for me. It's what I want for myself. Is yeah, I agree. Make with it that. on my own. Harvard doesn't care for those kind of uh, heartstring stories. Just give them <laughs> the basic. What you've done, what what impact it's had on you. Yeah, uh, in, in a very wide way, the impact. The impact they had, had on me was a wake-up call. Yeah, good. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, got a lot going for you. You've accomplished a lot. Uh, good, interesting question. Coming from Canada to Harvard Business School, John, is that a non-issue or is that a plus? Or they got so many Canadians. I think I think that's a plus, particularly because of the Chinese connection and, and his uh, post MBA goals. The country besides the United States with the most students at Harvard Business School is? Um, let me, Canada. I think it is really? Canada. It could be <laughs> India, but I'm pretty sure it's Canada. Yeah. I'll uh, look that up at some other point. So <laughs> see, what are his odds? What are Bill's odds at, at Harvard if he gets a 730? Uh, they're they're good, man. You know, your your odds are like uh, 30, 40 percent, which is you know as high as I give because anybody can screw up the interview. You just execute uh, serviceably, get the 7:30, tell your story. They they want a guy like you if you particularly if you can present yourself as someone who can help Harvard have an impression in China. You know, yep. so they, they'd like that. And I think at Wharton, same thing, even, you know, or, or Columbia, I'm sorry, Columbia. Uh, for Columbia, what you have to do is convince them you want to go to Columbia. And that shouldn't be hard to do. They, their programs are in sync with what you're doing. As I tell everybody with Columbia, go visit if you can or engage with them the most degree possible. I realize look, they're not giving tours anymore because of COVID, but just engage with them, make it clear. If they have online forums, attend those and refer to it. 
Yeah. And I was very impressed with what, you know, what Professor Smith said in the Forum for Interested Students, blah, blah, blah. I think Bill should apply to more than just Columbia and Harvard, too. Do you think that? Shouldn't he be applying to Wharton and to um, Chicago Booth and maybe even MIT? Yeah, I mean, That's Booth is great. My mentor you. graduated from there. And, yeah. and MIT, I've got my uh, grown up friend. Uh, he just finished his uh, doctor's degree, PhD from MIT, but not uh, in business. He's a chemical guy. Uh, I just think you need to hedge your bets. It's a highly competitive season. Harvard is tough no matter what. Of course. Just, um, uh, and you're 30, okay? This is yeah, another, yeah, yeah. he has, he doesn't really, you know, the window for a reapplication if he doesn't get into Harvard isn't as great as it would be if he were 28 or 27. So that's why I think he needs to hedge his bets a little more. I don't see the 30 as being a super big issue. Uh, although he, it's at the end of, yeah. what do they say there, you know, the end of the normal. Getting old. <laughs> yeah. Uh, getting into the game. tail from the body. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you got a lot going for you, man. I, 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 you know, I think... Uh, you could put together a very strong Harvard app on these facts. They're really looking for guys like you. They're looking for someone. A lot of people from China say they're going to go back to China, and then they don't. But in your case, you could be more convincing. Yeah. Yeah. Given the family network, that's a critical part of your story. Yeah. And the friends I made when I was studying in Canada, because uh, as you you are well aware that um, most mostly the wealthy families and powerful families send their kids abroad. So right. the, the amount of right. network that I've uh, come to develop, and there is some very powerful families that I can tell you that that I've come come to know, and they they are very interested in. They know me personally. We grow up together, kind of mm -hmm. during the university years. So they and they actually asked me to go back to China working for their yeah, family business. Your, your but, you know, I have mine. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a good fact. Your task is to integrate that substance in your application in a non-offensive way. Yeah. See, because you don't want to sound braggy or you don't want to sound like, you know, hey, exactly. I'm part of the, you know, the plutocrat <clears throat> network there in China. So take yeah. me. So yeah, that's I'm very down to earth. I'm a humble guy. Good. You need to be. Yeah, well, I, I don't care about that, quite frankly. I care <laughs> well, about your application. Yes. This is important. <laughs> You've got to present as someone who is down to earth. We don't, they don't, they, humility is just down to earth is enough for them. Realistic yeah. and down to earth and um, <clears throat> personally aware, you know, intellectual, whatever that thing was about intelligence. What's that other kind of type of intelligence, John? EQ. Yeah, EQ, emotional what intelligence. Emotional intelligence, yeah. yeah. Just present that way. All well, right, I, Bill, good luck to you. Uh, you know, good luck on that 7.30 and telling your story well. Um, yeah. If you do, Sandy you thinks you got a great shot at Harvard. Hedge your bets, <laughs> okay? <Yeah. laughs> uh, you want to go you. now. You don't want to wait any longer, okay? Because uh, you're going to wait. Matriculation will be 31, so you want to go now. Yeah. All right, okay. Sandy, thank you for your great yeah. advice and insights. Okay. This is Friday's with Sandy.